The stories contained in this podcast are the recollections of the guests we've invited onto the show. We are an outlet for people to share their truths, and we accept no legal responsibilities for the stories contained herein. I'm Kendra Sheets. And I'm Rich Gill. And this is Enough, a podcast that aims to shine light into the darkened corners of the music industry while discussing the ways we can and should improve ourselves and in turn our community. Welcome back to another episode of Subtext. For the last few episodes we've done, we've been covering stories both old and new because they have made it back into the news with updates. We've covered P. Diddy just a month before his home was raided. We addressed Justin Sane's fleeing of the country last month when it made the news. And today, in lieu of a May interview, we thought we should cover the latest news in the case that basically brought our country to the point that we're in and lit the Me Too movement ablaze. That case, of course, is Harvey Weinstein. Now, while we know many of you out there are likely aware of some aspects of what happened in Hollywood and why, we figured we would summarize what occurred in full as a number of those events and survivors affect the latest courtroom. So, in the fall of 2017, both the New York Times and the New Yorker broke the story that Harvey Weinstein was being accused of sexual assault, sexual abuse, and rape by a large number of women over at least 30 years. The people accusing him ranged from extremely well-known Hollywood movie stars to people who worked in his office. Weinstein was a very well-known name in Hollywood media as he and his brother founded Miramax along with the Weinstein Company. Those two companies have put out more of your favorite movies than you probably even know. Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino specifically pretty much owe their entire careers to Miramax. They were huge. And after the news was released, it of course spread like wildfire, and over 80 women in the film industry eventually came forward with their own stories about Weinstein. The list included Ashley Judd, Rose McGowan, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Harvey Weinstein, of course, denied any non-consensual sex. But that didn't matter. The news was already out there, and the women kept coming forward. In May of 2018, he was arrested and charged with rape in New York. The case went to court in early 2020. At the trial, six women testified that he had sexually assaulted them. Those women who testified were called to do so to develop an idea of what his character was. They were not specifically the women who had charged him. The charges that he was on trial for stem from two women, a former production assistant who experienced assault in 2006 and a former actress whose account was from 2013. On February 24, 2020, just before COVID started, a jury found Weinstein guilty of two of five felony counts. These included rape in the third degree and a criminal sexual act in the first degree. The three not guilty charges included two very serious charges of predatory sexual assault, but the jury stated that they were hung on those two counts. Weinstein was sentenced to 23 years in prison, and at 68 years old, that was basically a life sentence. Fast forward to April of 2020, and he is charged with sexual battery by restraint against a third victim for an incident in 2010 in Los Angeles. In October 2020, he was charged with another six additional sexual assault charges stemming from three other incidents in hotel rooms, three counts of forcible rape and three counts of forcible oral copulation. On April 12, 2021, he was formally indicted on 11 counts of sexual assault in L.A. County, and on July 20th, 2021, he was extradited across the country for another trial. The trial started in October 2022, and by December of the same year, Weinstein was found guilty of three of seven charges. He was charged with one felony count each of forcible rape, forcible oral copulation, sexual penetration by use of force, and sexual battery by restraint. He was sentenced to 16 years with his California prison term, required to be served separately from his New York sentence. He was then returned to New York to serve his sentence there. In June of 2022, a panel of five judges of the New York Supreme Court Appellate Division, First Judicial Department, unanimously rejected his appeal attempt against his New York sentence. His attorneys vowed to keep trying next with the New York Court of Appeals. That brings us to where we are today. Oral proceedings before that court began in February of this year. And on April 25th, 2024, the New York Court of Appeals overturned the convictions four to three, stating that the trial judge 
had made quote unquote egregious errors by admitting the testimony of those six women who had been assaulted by Weinstein, but were not charging him in the case. And because of this, the court ordered a retrial of the rape allegations. Because of a legal technicality, the survivors are now again in an emotional state of limbo. Any small semblance of closure they felt, gone. And they may even need to give their testimony again, reopening a very painful and triggering wound. One of the survivors stated through her lawyer that she's planning on it and is ready. One of the Court of Appeals judges who dissented, Judge Madeline Singus, stated that this continues a, quote, disturbing trend of overturning jury's guilty verdicts in cases involving sexual violence, end quote and that this comes at the, quote, expense and safety of women, end quote. In another dissent, Judge Anthony Canataro writes that this was, quote, endangering decades of progress in this incredibly complex and nuanced area of law, end quote, regarding sex crimes after centuries of deeply patriarchal and misogynistic legal tradition. Unfortunately, there is a possibility that this New York ruling may have an impact on the appeal of Weinstein's L.A. rape conviction. Jennifer Bongine, one of Weinstein's attorneys, stated that, quote, a jury was told in California that he was convicted in another state for rape. Turns out he shouldn't have been convicted and it wasn't a fair conviction, end quote. This whole situation has understandably been bringing up comparisons to Bill Cosby's conviction in 2018 on three felony counts of aggravated assault in 2004. We all remember Cosby, right? the lovable TV father figure who was drugging and raping women while imparting his moral compass against rap music and The Simpsons? Well, in 2021, his conviction was overturned, also based on a technicality. This one was related to a previous prosecutor's promise not to charge Cosby. So he was freed from a Pennsylvania prison after serving three of his three to 10-year sentence. And as a side note, The U.S. Supreme Court has refused to hear an appeal of a Pennsylvania court's decision to throw out his sexual assault conviction. These high-profile incidents do not only affect those who are involved. They affect survivors everywhere as the whole world is watching. It has been reported that a number of the Weinstein accusers are feeling disheartened by the change in ruling. But some of these women have stated that they will be part of the retrial process. They will go through the trauma of reopening those wounds once again with the hope that Weinstein will remain behind bars, because it fucking matters that much to them. Other survivors may see what happened here and decide that it is not worth the risk to come forward about their own rape stories when the result is so hopeful and then so painful. But it is important to remember that this trial occurred and that they won. It took dozens of women coming forward to get a trial of this scale to take place, but they did it and they fueled a national, scratch that, international movement. We cannot and we will not go back to a time before Me Too was a household name and fuck any anti-woke comedian, Trump apologist, Fox News pundit, and sock puppet Twitter account who thinks otherwise. In what has been a very grim episode about a very upsetting turn of events, there are some positives. The New York District Attorney's Office stated that they do plan to retry the case. And there is evidence, which was excluded from the original trial, which perhaps can be allowed in this one, which may propel the case forward again with damning examples confirming once again who this person really is. It is also important to remember that Weinstein is still currently in prison because of his L.A. ruling. I didn't understand that when I first heard this news. I thought we had a Cosby situation on our hands all over again, and he was about to walk free. But that's not the case. He is still in jail. However, his lawyers are planning to appeal the L.A. decision, and those arguments are due on May 20th. This case had everything that the skeptics of assault and rape always demand. Publicly, over 80 women spoke out. In trial, there were copious amounts of evidence and victim testimony. The Hollywood media population spoke out about how Weinstein's behavior was an in-plain-sight secret, quote-unquote, for decades. Nathan Lane made reference to it at the 2002 Oscars, and Courtney Love and Seth MacFarlane both referenced Weinstein's behavior in 2005 and 2013, respectively. But still, there are people out there who support him, people who are celebrating this appellate decision, 
people who are eager to see the Me Too movement slow down and even stopped. All people deserve to be able to feel safe in spaces all over this country, from places of employment, to music venues, to film sets, to when they are just out walking in the street. No one should have to fear for safety at the hands of rapists. So our questions to the skeptics, to the Harvey supporters, to the die-hard Cosby fans are as follows. When will enough be enough to you? What is enough evidence? Enough history of repeat behaviors? How many women have to come forward before you believe them that the person in question is a predator? When there always seems to be a desire for more or an excuse for why, I think the real question is, when will you admit that it's never been about the new birth survivors or copious amounts of evidence? It's that you don't value women or survivors as people. Enough is a podcast centering on surviving abuse, harassment, and assault in the music scene. To help get the word out, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you have been on the receiving end of harm from someone, be it artist, venue owner, booking agent, audience member, or someone else, and would like to share your story on a future episode, please reach out to us at thisisenoughpodcast at gmail.com. All correspondences are kept confidential.